What would you say? I have no idea, man. Because without, be this, honest, without this, without this, our whole understanding of even logic, even mathematics, everything fails. This consciousness is something that is quite important. Now the question arises: I don't, I don't know. Are you? Do you believe in God, or are you? An agnostic or um, an atheist? Just, just I don't to know. Save, to save time, yeah. um, unfortunately, we have to categorize. We, you could say agnostic. Because, agnostic? Because I don't know, I don't know everything. No, no. Fair enough, fair enough. You see, one thing that the people who, believe, who don't believe in God, and I'm not saying you don't believe in God because you said you're an agnostic, you're on the fence, oh, kind of undecided. Of yeah, that's what I'm saying, undecided. That's the reason you're sitting on the fence and saying, I don't know whether God exists or not. Am I right? Probably about uh, lack of evidence. That yeah. So I don't know what, if you're looking for evidence in, in terms of what would satisfy you or, or make your belief go from agnostic to atheist, what is it you're looking for? What is the criteria you're looking for? Yeah, I've been asked that question before, yeah. but um, maybe I have a completely different conception of what God might be, okay. you know, from, from, from you. So I'm not sure I can answer that so well. Although about consciousness, it would be interesting to talk a bit more about that. Okay, let's talk about consciousness. No problem. Just, uh, possibly like, um, maybe just put it into context. Yeah, yeah sure. Would you say personality is some meta analysis as well? Because you said it's knowledge. So you want to read other people and explore different religions before you make a conscious decision with one. Absolutely. So would you say, would you say meta analysis? Just to contextualize, I guess. Like, well, sure, sure. I would. I, I need to. I need to research many, many, many things. Absolutely. Before I would make any choice. You know. But about consciousness. Consciousness. Yeah. So there's an idea. What is your understanding of consciousness? Let's start with that. I'm not sure. So let's see. It's an idea that it's yeah. a it's a product of our advanced brains. That it's a byproduct of evolution. In that. Really? Well, yeah. Because one of the major things that we use our consciousness for is to understand the possibilities of the future and understand the, the experience of the past. And that's one of the reasons, in theory, that we're such good survivors. So you're we so, the so you're saying that an organism that cannot think about the future is not conscious, by your well, definition. Uh, I'm, I can't really make a scientific no, no, but definition of I'm, it. It's not a scientific definition, trust me. The definition you gave, I'm working with that. So you're saying for us to predict the future, for example, how to survive better and so on, okay? So my, my uh, counter question to that would be, an organism like amoeba, yes, who doesn't really plan for the future, yes, all it cares about is trying to survive yeah. the best possibility, Trying to eat, trying to basically do whatever it wants, yes, in the simplest form. Mm. Does it have consciousness? Is it aware of its surrounding? Most likely not. It is. Others it wouldn't be able to feed. You see what I mean? In order for you to, to, uh, to understand the difference between what is food and what is not food, you need to be aware of your environment, yes? You can't just eat everything because everything that amoeba comes across is not food. I don't think it's that simple. Oh, no, I'm saying, I'm saying. To be aware of your environment is one of the key things in, in for, for your consciousness to be active. But that's not what I said. I talked about conceptualizing possibilities in the future and understanding the experience of the past. Yeah, but that's so that's why I'm asking. Your definition seems very limited to what consciousness really is. Because consciousness, for example, are you conscious that you're you exist? I, oh, not this one again. Is that, right, cool. It can sound philosophical. No, but, no, it is. It is. But because, I'm aware of the, but because of the definition of consciousness, you need to understand first whether you exist, whether that your surrounding is, is something that is real, is not some some aliens who have got who got uh, some device in your <laughs> in your brain and trying to basically create this environment around you. Yeah. So, are you aware that you're conscious? Are you aware that you exist? What's that? God, big one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a toy for me. <laughs> All right, uh, well, it's the, it's the brain in the jar argument. It's, yeah. It's, and it, yeah. And what do you I, think I of had, that? Well, I had this argue, I had this discussion one time before here on Speaker's Corner. And okay. I, and I don't particularly think most people want to hear it again because it, it's really a dead end. It's uh, I'm aware that I think and okay. that I understand my own thoughts, but everything outside of that, I can't actually prove that it exists or not. But I run on the assumption that it does. But even even you saying I think, yes. How do you know that is you thinking or somebody forcing you to think the way you think? Maybe you don't, maybe it's true, maybe you aren't. So you see, even your thinking, even the most basic of that, you are, un you are unsure of. But it is something that would exist okay. if we talk about existence. You know, you know for, for, for many atheists, I'm not saying for you, for many atheists, all this, I, I know, that's why I said not for you. I made it very clear. So for many atheists, all this existence is just meaningless. It doesn't have a meaning. So everything is just random matter, yes? coming together randomly 
produce, producing all these uh, effects from that particular cause. Yes. Could you not make your own meaning though? You could, but I'm saying let's. We need to then understand or basically analyze that particular definition. It's quite important, isn't it? So if everything was meaningless, like they say, I'm not saying like you say, then for us, even consciousness doesn't even matter. Everything else just meaningless, just random material coming together and just behaving randomly and one day this is going to finish. And that's why we come, you see, for us as theists, for us as someone who believes in God, we start with the premise that God exists. You know why? Because we believe that there has to be some cause to bring all these things, material and non-material, into existence. And if there is an alternate, an alternative, from your perspective, what, what would that be? Oh, the existence of everything. Okay, um, it could exist by chance for no reason. No, but how does it originate? I have no idea. It can't, I can't, it can't be answered. You must have thought about it. Sure, can I just but, prove, but can I prove, how, how could I can possibly answer that? Yeah, sure, sure. What do you guys think about the... Um, what do you guys, you mean the agnostic? The two of you. Oh, the two of you. Sorry, sorry. I just just random yeah. philosophical question. What do you guys think about the idea that even within nothing, there is still something? I don't buy that. Just in the sense that nothing is still something. No. Nothing doesn't exist, my friend. Something. Nothing doesn't exist. It's a concept. But that's what I'm trying to say. The concept still exists. Yeah, but the concept doesn't exist in the sense that it is something that, it, for example, infinity. Yeah. Does it exist? Does infinity exist? Yes. Can't be proven. No, but does it exist? No, no. There you go. So a concept of nothing is similar to uh, infinity. One is extreme at this edge, and the other is extreme the other end. Because infinity, in order for the mathematicians to do certain calculations, and for the philosophers to understand certain concepts, yeah. yes, we use this term for us human beings to basically communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. Same thing with nothing. Because to me, nothing is basically the absence of everything. If, if it's absence of everything, I believe it doesn't even exist. But then, it's just a concept for was, us to communicate better. That's I was all. treating it as almost a like how the, how you kind of re reference light is the absence of darkness, and darkness is the absence of yeah, light. Yeah, but light light is photons, you know. Light yeah, is I'm not sorry. nothing. I'm light sorry. is nothing. But but if you talk about well, darkness, light is very interesting. If it you, has if, mass and it doesn't have mass. Well, that that is it's still matter. For us, <laughs> it look, exists. For, for us, I, I didn't say anything about mass. Remember. I said about something. When I say something, Matt, to me, light is something. It's not nothing. Light is something, yes? yes some yes. people call it waves, some call it particles, and they both are correct. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's nothing. No, light is something. Absolutely. Darkness? That's a good thing what you just defined. I agree yeah. with that. It's the absence of light. But does it exist? Yes, absence of light exists in many places. But that's in space, there is no light, yeah. but there is darkness there. But that is just space, maybe, empty space. What I'm saying is that space itself exists. Yes? Understand. Does time exist? Yeah. It does. does time exist? Well, yeah, sure. I'm not sure how time is correctly defined because it, it might be the time is measured in, the, in how things change. You can't see time unless things change. Yeah. So time is not like material. That. You're right, time is not material. Yeah. It is um, uh, it's a means of measurement of yeah, how yeah, we absolutely. linearly think. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to think many things. Yeah. And it's again a concept to measure basically a change from A to B. Yeah. So everything is measured. I just wanted to yes. Know, I just so wanted what I'm saying is that there are many things in our um, conversation that we yeah. talk about which might just be concepts, but they are quite important concepts, without which it's not possible to have a meaningful discussion. Yeah. So if anyone says nothing exists, then they don't know the meaning of it. nothing. Because to me, nothing is a concept. It is not something that exists in real world. It is concept to understand the absence of everything. But okay. then something has to exist for you to make that, that assertion. If nothing ever exists, you exist. Yeah, You're making that no, absolutely, absolutely. But if nothing exists, right, yeah. and nothing is defined by the existence of something, right? So we measure nothing by the absence of something. Not really. Do we not? Are you able to understand something without knowing anything about nothing? So that yes. Are you able to know something? For yeah. example, if yeah. I if I asked you, okay, this microphone here, if you didn't know the meaning of nothing, does it still exist? So you don't need nothing, the understanding of nothing, to make sense of everything else. No, I understand. Because you see, for us, our senses are 
adequate to understand most things. Yes, our senses are adequate to understand most things. However, there are certain things which our senses are unable to pick up. We use certain devices, for example, radio waves. You got a mobile phone? Yes. Do you see the radio waves? No. Do dogs hear radio waves? Yes. No, they don't. Yes, they sound sound waves. You're thinking about sound waves. Radio waves are different.